Hey guys, Steve here, and welcome to the first part of the SS United States series. So this is kind of like my first large series that I'm kind of doing. Hopefully I can make it into five parts. It might be four parts, but we'll see how it turns out. But uh, So as you remember, and I'm going to be talking a lot on this video, as a lot of the video footage I've taken has a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, just has people talking. So I'm going to kind of talk through, but please watch as you listen. Anyway. Um, as you remember, I did post a video of this sh ocean liner uh, a few months ago, and it kind of lacked the video footage, in other words, because I was doing more photos. So this was my second trip and my last trip, because if not most of you have heard, the SS United States uh, is in an option agreement with Crystal Cruise Lines, um, and what they want to do is they actually want to return this ocean liner into a working ocean liner again actually um, so they are leasing the ship for nine months they haven't bought it yet but they're leasing the ship for nine months and they're going to do studies and uh, investigations to see if and how they plan to do it so they estimated between 700 to 800 million US dollars to restore the ship and when it does get restored it's got to be modernized um, to today's standard so it's going to kind of look a little bit different it's going to have the same bones but different motors because it can't use steam anymore um, I just think the bridge has to be uh, closer to the bow and uh, a little bit higher so um, we'll see how well that works out but obviously that's been a big thing in the news this past few months and that's a good thing hopefully they go with it because the ship's been sitting in Philadelphia since 1996 actually it's been out of commission since 1969 it was the last uh, voyage it had um, and the airlines kind of killed the ocean liners you know fleets in other words uh, this was part of the S or the United States lines so again I'm mostly going to be talking here we are inside the ship now and we are just walking through the first class staterooms uh, and the ship has been pretty much stripped it is bare metal uh, a bit bare aluminum that is and you kind of see where the walls and toilets and showers used to be in these rooms. Uh, it ended up being stripped when it went to Ukraine to be um, ebated from all the asbestos because any a lot of ships, old ships, have had uh, asbestos. This, by the way, is the first class dining room, and this is a balcony looking down to it. And you can see all those pegs sticking out on the floor, by the way. The ship was fireproof, so everything was electric. There was no candles. It was electric candles. It was the designer of the ship tried to make it as 100 percent fireproof as they, he could, and the designer is William Gibbs, by the way. Um, anyway, back I went to Ukraine. It had the asbestos removed in the early 90s, and then it made its way here to Philadelphia in 1996. For Philadelphia had plans to use it as a I guess riverfront attraction. Of course, the workers here and other things, uh, they have issues, and obviously the plan fell through and it just sat here in Philadelphia. And again, it's been here for a pretty long time. The SS United States Conservatory owns the ship right now. Again, Crystal Cruise Lines is leasing it from them, and if they do choose to go forward, they will be purchasing the ship. So uh, here's some more of the staterooms. Uh, and as you can see, all this here is aluminum. And uh, this is the tourist class entry. So this is where the tourist class would come in. Um, these are two main doors. The classes, unlike the Titanic, where it was first class, middle class, and steerage, for a ship like this, it was first class, cabin class, and then tourist class. First class, obviously, is the higher end, higher, richer people. Cabin class is middle class, and tourist class is just mainly lower class. Um, here's a bar uh, in here. The this was the first class, or I believe the first. No, this I'm sorry. This was a tourist class smoking room, and uh, it's one of the bars here that's remaining. Not much left of it, as you can see here. But it was kind of cool to actually see something because this ship is pretty stripped, as I mentioned earlier. It is really stripped out. <laughs> Um, there was a couple goodies left. Uh, the engine rooms are pretty cool, which you'll be seeing in a later series and uh, some other things. But anyway. So I got really lucky to get on the SS United States by having a family friend who knew someone who worked for the conservatory. And uh, 
it's been something I've been trying to do for a long time, and I'm not I'm talking about before I even started doing this YouTube stuff. Uh, it it was something I've been doing, trying to do for a long time, and that's an elevator right there, by the way. And when I found out that I could tour the ship, it was uh, let's just say I was jumping up and down because. Is something I'm always into this stuff and obviously you can see from the YouTube channel I like doing this and this is a history right here as this is one of the fastest ocean liners to ever cross the transatlantic or uh, the Atlantic Ocean pretty much uh, there is a secret top speed that some people are saying is well over 50 miles per hour but uh, the the regular speed is about 40 miles per hour which for a 990 foot long ocean liner that is pretty fast uh, my father has a boat and 40 miles per hour on a 24 foot boat and this is 990 feet so that is pretty impressive and it had some pretty top secret stuff in it um, I am not sure what kind of room this is here um, it looks like a bunch of radiators and pipes I'm not sure on this anybody can comment the word does say FSD maybe it's a fire uh, room or something a bunch of breaker panels here um, but I'm not sure on that so in this room this is really cool this is the room that had the motors that actually took up the anchors so these are the it, the anchors that are on this thing weigh it has to be over a thousand tons it's got to be it may be even more than that it's got to be a lot but these this was the room that was in charge of lifting that anchor chain and dropping the chain um, when it needed to uh, anchor anywhere and uh, the the camera here my video doesn't do justice the size of the some of these equipment is pretty impressive uh, and the floor was coated with oil um, or grease and uh, it was kind of slippery but the uh, it was pretty impressive walking through this room and the, the how the, how these motors pulled up these anchors and I mean these anchors were bigger than I was and I don't know it's kind of impressive to see I'm not sure where that staircase goes down it obviously goes down as we are in the very front of the boat um, or the ocean liner here so um, pretty neat some breaker panels Another interesting thing uh, of this vessel as we're walking out of the room here that's in charge of lifting the anchors um, is the ship was designed to be converted to a military ship if World War III was to happen. So it's been built and designed pretty well. And that's one reason why it's, you know, it's not in that bad shape. I mean, it looks like it's in not that good shape from the video here, but... Um, it's not actually not it's not even like it's not really taking on that much water they say by the way this broom here when they went to ukraine to clean out the asbestos they had people sweeping the floors with that broom no mask and nothing talk about you know that's probably why i went to ukraine because they i guess get at different standards but it's you know everybody knows asbestos is not good for you so this long shot i'm just showing the curvature of the ship here you can see how it kind of curves up it's kind of hard to see but uh as you're walking through the ship you start walking uphill um towards the back and towards the front and it's pretty interesting. Um, this is the master stairway, first class and cabin class. And this goes up to A, B, C, you know, it goes down to A, B, C, and D deck, um, and goes up to the promenade level and up to the top. The, what I was saying about the vessel being converted to a naval ship, um, with there was World War Three is um, it, it was made to actually transport 15,000 troops and uh, you know it's a large vessel but it's pretty impressive to get 15,000 troops obviously they're not gonna get the luxury of this but it could at any time be converted to a naval ship funded by the United States government for that reason and you know it's pretty impressive so we're, we're walking up more of the grand staircase here. And, you know, you might hear some talking. That is 
the other guys that I'm with, you know, our tour guide who's been taking us around and allowing us to uh, see this. This deck here, which I believe is the promenade deck, will have a lot more light. That is out the walkway area outside. We will be getting into that in a later series. This was a lounge, and I kind of walk up to the window here to kind of see. Um, these are the windows on the front of the vessel. You can kind of see out. That is the pier that it's right next to. I'd say we're about 50 feet up, and um, we're, it, the ship's you know pretty high. So, thanks for watching, everybody. This first part, and here is a sneak peek of what is to come next episode, which I believe I'm going to put it out next weekend. So please stay tuned. We got cabin class theater we got the auditorium and we got a lot of outdoor stuff including the sound of the ropes snapping in half so thanks for watching facebook twitter instagram my website make sure you follow everything you can and i will see you on the next one see ya